when I make sugar flowers, um, you know, I sometimes make like a fantasy type of flowers, but for most of my cakes and most of my classes, I prefer botanically correct flowers. Um, I'm really known for my detail into my flowers, and so I always try and like look at the real flower and then use that as a sample to work from. So I would definitely go towards the botanically correct as much detail as possible. So it fools people because then they say, wow, I can't believe those are sugar, you know, because they look like real flowers. When I was, um, you know, younger as a teenager, I worked in a flower shop in a florist and later on actually trained as a florist. And that really helped me a lot in understanding flowers. But actually for my whole life, probably from when I was a very small child, I used to love looking at flowers in my dad's garden. And, uh, you know, I've always had a love of flowers. Um, I've taught in um, actually, um, over 30 countries and uh, so it, I've taken, you know, Sugarcraft has taken me to places that first of all most people would only dream of going but you know it's amazing that all of these places I've been to have been related to a cake or to sugar flowers. You know again I've in my 34 years in this in my industry I've had uh, you know opportunity to make cakes for members of the royal family in England and celebrities but actually probably what stands out as my most enjoyable cake would probably be for Keaton Gerhard, who's pastry chef and friend who lives in Denver. Uh, when him and his wife Lisa got married in Texas a few years ago, uh, pretty much all the guests were pastry chefs, so they were all friends and colleagues, and we just had a most wonderful time. And uh, that probably stands out as one of my most memorable cakes, and as far as the one I enjoyed the most. A lot of times we think about just the basic flowers, but there are of course so many, many flowers you can make. When you look at different garden varieties, there are thousands that you could potentially make in sugar, and a lot of really fun ones. And of course, I haven't made every flower that is, is created. I mean, there are thousands that I haven't made, so. You know, hopefully over the next few years I'll be able to try some of the flowers and maybe I'll get up to 500 flowers I made in sugar. So when, you know, somebody starts making sugar flowers, it's, it's a little bit like a lot of hobbies and pastimes and, you know, recreational things we do. There's a lot of equipment, so sometimes it can become a little overwhelming. Uh, but, you know, start off with the basics. The best thing to do is to pick a flower that you want to learn. Just get the basic equipment to make that flower. Once you've mastered that, then you can go on to something more advanced. And most importantly, I tell my students, remember to breathe. That's a very important thing. Um, you know, pace yourself. Don't get stressed. You know, it's uh, sugar. Um, it's a very easy to, you know, re-roll out product. Once you start making flowers, I mean, most students are amazed how easy it is to work with it. Because, as I said, you know, now we have so many great products that you can use that make life easier, like using a pasta attachment and, you know, all the different cutters and veiners. They also make the flowers look more realistic as well. Just, as I said, to have a little patience. But if you have a true passion for this, um, it's going to be a wonderful um, thing to, to make, create sugar flowers and you'll have a lot of fun and your family will enjoy them and you can make them just for gifts or you could do them on a cake, you know, it's a wonderful opportunity to use them in lots of different ways.